Resembling a duo that's played together for over a decade, Sixer James Harden has got an undefeated 5 0, and Joel Embiid's 43 and 14 against the Bulls signifies that he's an MVP frontrunner. While Embiid rightfully generates every headline, Throughout the last few years, Sixer President Daryl Morey, along with General Manager Elton Brand, have built up an adequate supporting cast. Harden's arrival in the city of brotherly love has led to an explosion from sophomore Tyrese Maxey, and has also allowed the trade deadline acquisition from three years ago at this time in Tobias Harris, aka J. Cole, to move back into a dangerous fourth scoring option. 2019's 20th overall draft pick and a member of 2021's all-defensive second team in Matisse Thybul, becoming one of the NBA's most valuable shooting guard defenders, is just one of many well-suited Philly role players. So this video shows you how the Philadelphia 76ers have every piece in place. Right quick, only 11.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. In five total games next to the beard, Tyrese Maxey is averaging 24.8 points, making 63% of his overall shots, and 64% of his attempts from three-point range. Maxi's mix of speed, fundamentally sound shooting, and ball handling ability puts extreme pressure on the defense. Given the beastly 1-2 punch of Joel and James already overwhelms defenses, another elite three-level score dicing up opposing game plans in the 2022 playoffs could make it scary hour for any team matched up with Philly in a seven-game tilt. The University of Kentucky alumni in Tyrese is ahead of Ja Morant and Desmond Bain of Memphis, and just behind Anthony Simons of Portland for the highest point per game improvement from last season. More than doubling his rookie scoring output, the sophomore Tyrese Maxey has posted near 18.5 assist and 4 rebound averages on extremely efficient shooting splits of 48, 42, and 86. Just like an underrated Sixer player who we'll look at later on, Maxey was passed on by over 50% of general managers on his respective draft night. November 18th of 2020 saw Adam Silver call 20 names before Tyrese heard his own. It becomes impossible to believe that fact when taking into account all the space Maxi's capable of creating for himself with Harden-esque stepbacks like the one on your screen right now. After Harden's home debut where he dropped six three-pointers, Maxi had this to say about how he's able to create that space off the dribble. Speed is a factor because everyone's trying to take away from me getting downhill and getting to the lane. They're trying to back off me because they're scared of my speed. As Philadelphia gets used to the franchise's new era of being led by James Harden and Joel Embiid, while the team's third star in Maxi's development helps tremendously, Coach Doc still needs his role players to step up. Due to his ability to stop opposing players in one-on-one -on -one scenarios, Matisse Tybel's become a full-time starter. He also has a great chance to be named to the all-defensive first team. Tybel's 107.2 defensive rating is currently the lowest among all shooting guards according to StatMuse. With that said, I'm sure Sixer fans are desperate to see him contribute more consistently on the other end of the court. Tybel's still not a great three-point shooter, but he is improving as an off-ball cutter, making a habit of catching his matchup sleeping and slipping back door. Speaking on that ability, the second team all defender in 2021 said, quote, it's been good. I think cutting is something I got a lot better at this season. I think it was a huge thing that I worked on during the off season and at the Olympics, just playing with a different team, different guys, and honestly, just having different looks. It grew that aspect of the game for me on the mental side. The Australian-American 25-year-old in Matisse also touched on how that cutting comes into play with his new running mate in James Harden, saying, We're using more screening situations, pick and roll, double drags, and him and I developing a relationship and feel for each other in that sense. For me, having it be something relatively new, it's just a learning process, and his ability to find me and just feeling the whole thing out has been pretty cool. That leads us into Embeard. Harden's now experienced his first handful of games in Sixer Threads, playing for a fan base that's gone through hell and back for the last decade, being the joke of the league for the first part of the decade, and then failing to make the conference finals in five consecutive years running. The new look Sixers returned home on Monday to take on the Chicago Bulls. James Harden joined the starting lineup after missing Saturday's game in Miami, 
He was resting his previously injured hamstring on the second night of a back-to-back -back in South Beach. Against the Bulls, though, Joel Embiid dominated from start to finish, dropping 43 points on 63.2% true shooting, along with 14 boards, 3 blocks, and 2 steals. James Harden flashed his elite playmaking ability, dishing out 14 assists to go along with 16 points and 8 rebounds. The Bulls were missing Nikola Vucevic, but on transition opportunities like this one, when a 7'2", 280-pounder just glides through the lane with the speed and swiftness of a shooting guard, there's little to nothing you can do to stop it. Casuals are going to whine about Joel getting too many chances at the charity stripe, but I think it's time we start respecting Embiid's ability to embrace contact around the bucket. Foul drawing is an essential quality in today's NBA, given hand-checking was banned back in 2004. Regardless of whether you'd make the argument that hand-checking should come back, Joel's combination of footwork and brute strength forces his matchup to overcommit, and it's plausible that Embiid would be getting to the line a significant amount in any era of basketball. Realistically, a man of Joel's stature, who makes 35% of his three-point shots with a handle off the dribble of a man half his size, is going to be fouling out his matchup whether he played in the 70s, 90s, or 2000s. 52-21-22 regular season games have seen Embiid make a clear case to win his first MVP award. Averaging an NBA most 30 points to go along with 11 boards, 4 dimes, 1.1 steals, and 1.4 blocks per game. Meanwhile, making Brooklyn Nets fans sad, James Harden in Sixer Threads has averaged 25 points and 12 dimes, shooting 53% from the field and 45% from beyond the arc, attempting 6 triples per game. Philadelphia's gone an undefeated 5-0 over that span, beating 3 plus 500 teams in the Timberwolves, Cavaliers, and Bulls. According to James himself, he knew from the moment he stepped onto the Sixers' court that his dramatic 14-month, three-team journey brought him exactly where he wanted to play. It's funny how fans are so quick to trash talk players for switching up, but have nothing to say about general managers when they move on from a player and it works out. Like any other top money-making business in the Western Hemisphere, the NBA is cutthroat. Decisions are made based on logic, trends, and facts, as opposed to emotions. Harden was out to prove something in front of the Philly Fateful during his home debut, saying, I just wanted to come out here and show my love is back. That the Bushy Beard did, flashing MVP form in his home debut by dropping 26 points, 9 dimes, and 9 boards. Joel Embiid had 27 points and 12 boards. Tyrese Maxey put up 25. Joel Embiid, Harden, and Maxey combined for 176 points in their first two games together. The only trio with more points in their first two games together in NBA history is Wilt Chamberlain, Paul Arizin, and York Lloris with 193 points way back in 1961. Embiid said after that game, quote, We all just fit together. James Harden added to that point saying, I feel like you can put me anywhere in the room and I can fit in. Here is no different. Just see what you have and try your best to fit in. Be the best James Harden I can be in every aspect. Coach Doc Rivers, who won a championship 14 years ago back in Beantown, touched on the hype his team's generating, saying, I think when you get guys like Joel and James together, with what we have, with all of our guys, our guys sense it too. Not the hoopla, though. It's that they have a real shot. You don't get many of these. Outside of Embiid, Harden, or Maxi, who's the Sixers' most crucial player? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Kent Saludo, who says the most lethal aspect of the Bucks' Big 3 is that they're all two-way players. The Big 3 consists of one of the best guard defenders in Drew Holiday, a solid perimeter defender who can guard positions 1 through 3 or even small ball 4s in Chris Middleton, Pause to read the rest of Kent's take. Appreciate every tremendous answer. I hope you have a great one. Deep low signing off.